Interessante. Oh, hey, we're you, here. Hey, you, come on, sit down. You're sitting at the grown-ups table. I'm your host, Jesse Pimpinella, and as always, my partner in crime, John Jacobs. Thank you very much, and a happy Wednesday to everybody, and thank you for bearing with us. We were running a little late, but uh, that was my fault, my apologies, but we are here to do a show. So what show are we doing today? I'm going to tell you. It's an 80s movie. It came out in 84, and it's about a young whippersnapper high school kid teaming up with an old wise dude. And no, I'm not talking about Back to the Future. I'm talking about the Karate Kid, folks. And not just anything. We're talking about the series that it's that it brought us, a.k.a. Cobra Kai. Cobra Kai, the series, has been kicking ass since its days on YouTube. And then it has brought all the way to Netflix glory. And every New Year's, when we watch the ball drop, we're also waiting for Banzai! And we're watching Yagi Do, we're watching uh, Cobra Kai, but then also Eagle Fang take it to the mat in the All Valley to see who will be the champs. Now, before we go any further talking about this, uh, I want to tell you guys, everybody right now who's sitting at the Grown Ups table with now, with us right now, to like and subscribe. All right, that's how we have fun. That's how we get more people involved and get them around the table. And will all episodes show up on YouTube the very next day. So if you can't catch this whole episode, not a problem. Go to YouTube. That's where to go. That's the next place to be. Now, this uh, want to give you a heads up. This show is going to have plenty of spoilers. All right? We are going to be talking about season four and all of its glory. The beer has been cracked, so you know what that means. It's time to start the show. In my favorite koozie, stay thirsty, my friends. Mm. Never uh, forget. Oh, and speaking of friends, this show cannot yeah. be complete without uh, uh, another big Cobra Kai fan, just as we are. Please give it up for our good friend, Big Al, everybody. Big Al. What's up, guys? How's it going? What's up, Al? Thanks for joining the show today, man. Thanks for having me. Great to be oh, here. Uh, welcome. Wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't dream about doing a Cobra Kai show without you, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so real quick, just to give everybody kind of a rundown, uh, Al, why don't you talk to us about why you love Karate Kid real quick? Oh, man. I mean, so just that whole movie franchise is just so quintessentially 80s. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? It just when, <laughs> when I watch those movies, it just takes me back yep. to just a different time. Uh, maybe arguably a better time. I don't know, depending on, 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 on where you were and who you were in the 80s. But, man, <laughs> I just love everything about it. And when they launched Cobra Kai, it just it brings back all those vibes. And just Johnny especially. Johnny Lawrence is my spirit animal. That dude and I are just on the same even keel. <laughs> Stop being <laughs> a pussy. <laughs> Stop being a pussy. Throw, throw, a freak or a loser. Just be a badass. <laughs> throw a hash brown on it and throw it on the internet. Like, <laughs> so run, I love that. That's, that was that's great. so fucking great. Oh, so love. fucking great. So, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Al and I actually have known each other for a really long time. Like, uh, oh shit, like middle school. So we're talking like almost thirty years now, and uh, we're really glad to have him on the show. And let's just really jump in and get started. Uh, Jesse, why don't you kick us off? Al talked about what he liked with with uh, uh, Karate Kid and Cobra Kai. Why don't you go and I'll go last? All right. So, I mean, what I liked so much about Karate Kid and Cobra Kai is, yes, it is essentially, it's just the essentials of the 80s. To the point where Danny Russo had to remind us every once in a while in the movies, hey, come on, it's the 80s. (laughs) 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 You got robbed. Of course we're going to go to the cops. It's the 80s. (laughs) Come on, Allie, you can drive my car. It's the 80s. (laughs) Every five seconds. I love that you're doing that Jersey accent. That's so good. (laughs) It's the 80s. (laughs) But what's so great about this movie is it does have, for me, I trained in martial arts. I taught for 10 years. And a lot of the stuff that they work on, the first movie, I mean, is all about muscle memory. So seeing that authentic authenticness with a little humor, obviously he's hiding the fact he's training them, is a really fun, creative thing. And it plays off a very funny idea of repetition, which martial arts does invite. Uh, the character Miyagi is just, uh, it's essential. When you hear somebody is the Miyagi of something, 
you know that they're wise yep. about whatever that topic may be. Um, this movie gave us great over the top villains. I mean, it's like, you know, look at this. You know, back then, uh, toxic nuclear wasn't the preferred waste. Now you can't dump it anywhere. I'm lucky if you do one deal and knock it soon. You know what I mean? Just like just, shit like that is just, it's beautiful. Jesse, think about, and, and Al, this is this is more for you and I because we lived through the 80s, man. Jesse, like, wasn't even DNA at that time. So <laughs> um, think about Fair. how many films like use toxic waste as like a plot point or a MacGuffin or like something to propel something forward or backwards. It was almost like at one point it was like anything would, would tie in toxic waste. Chud, that was a hot button in the eighties, man. That, that was a big hot button. Was toxic waste dumping? Yep. Uh, it was. It was a very political, uh, politicized issue. Yep. Um, it was definitely a bigger thing than, than than even now. Even you know, everyone talks about environment and going green and all that, but. In the eighties, like even there, there was heavy metal songs. I remember uh, <laughs> uh, there, there was a song called "Chemical" by I think it was it was it was Exodus, um, and uh, that's actually a really good song. But it's about it's about chemical toxic waste dumping and how how rich people kill people with that kind of thing. Right. It, it was a thing in the eighties. It was pop culture. It, it was, it it was really a thing. Was. It really was. You remember that? And by movie? the way, John, I just want to say I love. I love the headbands, and I don't know if you guys noticed my camera's doing stupid stuff, but like, did you see the shirt? Oh, there it is! Yes, there Dude. it is. My first strike card, I baby. That. I need. I get, to, uh, I need to get one of those. Actually, I get so many compliments on this shirt. Like when I wear it out, like if it's, it doesn't matter if it's the fucking grocery start grocery cart kid at Kroger coming up to me saying, "Hey, man, that's an awesome shirt. I can't wait for the new season." I'm like, "Yep, hell yeah, no mercy, motherfucker." That's right. Uh, or, uh, <laughs> just recently, like uh, my girlfriend and I, we went to a uh, reptile show in Hilliard, and uh, I wasn't gonna, you know, come on, I got, I got to rock the Cobra Kai shirt at a reptile show. Absolutely. And one of the vendors, one of the vendors there is like, man, that's a badass shirt, and I'm like, dude, bro, I wasn't gonna not wear this shirt at the reptile show. <laughs> right. You know, but yeah, I love this shirt, love the show, everything about it. I think that's I think that's big too because you have new fans that are going to recognize it, like you said, the cart getter guy at the grocery store. But right. you're also going to have forty and fifty year olds who grew up watching Karate Kid and be like, "Oh shit, dude!" Like, and they're instantly transported back to that moment, which I think you touched on really well. It's just about being transported back to that moment where toxic waste was the big deal. I think we made a movie with. Emilio Estevez and Charlie Sheen yeah, were centered around toxic waste dumping. I mean, it was just great. And I, I, I definitely agree. You wear something out like that, you're going to have a multitude of different people hitting you up and striking up a conversation. And I think that also demonstrates that this whole franchise has lived through time. I'm not going to say it's timeless because when you watch it, they're very rooted in their decades. The, the trilogy films so rooted in the 80s, 80s everything. And now Cobra Kai is rooted in this, you know, late 20 teens, early 2020s. And again, they they ground it all in those decades. So I wouldn't say that it's timeless, but because it's so fucking good, it lives on, <laughs> lives right. on, and it lives on. See, here's the thing. I would argue it's timeless. And the only reason why I would is because the lessons that it teaches in that movie, sure, they're, they're, they, they transcend. They transcend sure. in that way. Like I can imagine me showing my kids this movie one day. That's that's what we now. Of course, they're gonna ask a lot of other questions. You know what I mean? They'll be like, "Why do the cars have wheels on it?" But that's in a whole different show, right there. That's a it's whole. funny. You, it's funny you bring that up. I tried to introduce my kid, and I think we we didn't even really get the movie started. We might have got halfway through the first episode of Cobra Kai, and these kids today, it's just like not their thing. It, it's just it's a different world. Like they don't even watch TV. Like, they have no concept of what it was to understand. If I don't watch this TV show at the time that this thing in the newspaper is telling me, then I miss it forever unless we record it on a VHS tape. Like, they don't get that. And so TV to them is – it's all the streaming stuff and the YouTube and the Netflix. They, they don't comprehend watching TV. And so it's yeah. really hard to get them into something like this now. And, and you got to be careful with that too, because I've I've tried to get my kids to watch the, the, like the movies I cherish, the movies that yes I just associate with my childhood. I made my kids watch The Goonies not too long ago, and it's over. And I asked my o oldest daughter, I'm like, "So what'd you think?" She's like, "Then we sucked." Yeah, I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> 
this movie was everything to me. And you said, right? it dude, I saw the Goonies at the Marysville drive in theater, man. Nice. Like, that's how OG that is. And yeah, my kid was, we got her to watch it and she just wasn't impressed. And I'm like, how are you not impressed by this? Like, yeah, uh, it's a crazy time we live in, man. It just means we're all getting old. That's what it means. I guess. Well, let's jump over to the comment section just to show some love to our commenters real fast. Uh, Ted Wood, yeah, there will be ex- uh, well, there will be spoilers. There it excuses. is. No excuses. No excuses. Uh, as a kid of the 80s, I found it to be really good. It was a pleasant surprise as these remakes are poor shadows of the original. I agree, yeah. I mean, uh, it's uh, nowadays it's hard to recapture the 80s. I think Cobra Kai is doing what many movies and TV shows are trying to do, yep. but failing at it. So yep. I agree with that. Totally uh, agree. But it, but I'm only halfway through season four, so I'm See, out Ted. of it. So, all right. So, in this case scenario, tomorrow or whenever, go to YouTube. Our reruns are right there. Perfect example when to do it. I tuned in to hear the last, but staying for John's awesome headband. Right now, I'm like, if he could just take your beard and just tie it up like this, you could be Stingray right now. I want you to know. Well, I mean, I, I, I kind of, you know, I yeah. could, I could yeah. and then I could braid it and, you know, I could kind of, or I could split it. And I could do two and have horns, but uh, I'm not going to do that on camera. Well, well uh, Gloria Love. Oh, yeah, the 80s soundtrack. What's up, Tom? Yes, the that was from the second movie, Man at Work, being a great movie. I'll give that a golf clap. Everything deserves a golf clap. Uh, yeah. Around. Oh, Don't absolutely. Around. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's the song I chose for our story that we shared today. So, I mean, it's it was so that. great. Don't worry, they're gonna bring Hillary Swank in eventually. She's not coming. They can't afford her. She's not coming back, man. She did that. She did that Freedom Writers movie. Yes. She's on her way. The, the, you know the She's whole Oscar way. thing. You know she, she did the Hunt. She's on her way. She's, She's on not her on her way. She. She's I look. I'm calling it right now. She's not she gonna show up. Chugging along for that Cobra Kai paycheck. Oh, look at it this way, Jesse. If Hillary Swank is going to show up, then your boy Jaden Smith is going to show up doing that inverted defying okay, okay. physics he gravity not, kick that yeah. didn't hit the kid in the face because it was Kung Fu and not karate, even though the name was Karate Kid. First off, number one, all right, that was a Jackie Chan movie. Jackie Chan was the best. All right. What was the name of the movie, though? Oh, screw that. <laughs> really? But, well, what was the name of the film? It was incorrectly called Karate Kid. I'm not gonna oh, do but, but, but it wasn't corrected. The name is Karate Kid, and he taught him kung fu. I know. They did a whole South Park episode about this. I know. <laughs> I'm not saying that's not true. I'm just saying watching Jackie Chan beat the fuck out of a ten year old is an awesome movie for me. I mean, okay. <laughs> he, he beat, hold on, guys. Hold on. I have to bring this up. Yeah. Are you aware? Do you guys know? Do you understand? That there is a Cobra Kai video game. Yes. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. No. Is it any okay, good? Have you that. played it? I, I feel like a lot of people don't know that. I discovered it by accident. I PlayStation was having a sale, like a spring sale on their store. Uh-huh. So I just was tooling around to see what, what they had. And I saw Cobra Kai, and it wasn't on sale. It was full price. And I was like, I don't care. I'm buying this now. And it's badass. Not only did they get Ralph Macchio and uh, William Zapta to do voiceovers in the game, but it's got a sweet two-player co-op mode. Um, you get to choose which dojo you want to play as. And uh, you get to play as Johnny, and you pick up baseball bats, and you beat the shit out of teenagers with it. It's awesome. <laughs> it's the coolest fucking game. Oh, man. Add, just... add me on PlayStation, man. I, I, I definitely got to play it. It might be on Xbox. I don't know, but it's definitely on PlayStation. Okay. I'll wow. Check I'm going to check that out now. And if not, you guys can come over to my house and play with me because it's, it's sweet. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right, so let's get right into it. Let's talk about uh, season four, uh, or the. We'll do kind of a quick recap just to kind of bring everything back up to speed regarding uh, season four of this show. Ooh, now, ooh, can I start? Can I start? You want to start? All right, I you do. Have- you have all the permission to start now. I do. So I, I, I have to say how much I fucking love this poster. This poster is everything. Everything. Dude, it captures Karate Kid and Cobra Kai beautifully in one post. Look how fucking mean Crease looks in that picture. 
Like, the dude never smiles. Like, when I'm on this show, I smile a lot. But in real life, I'm not a smiler. And, uh, man, I can relate to Carice on that. You know, he's always pissed off. Shit's not going the way he wants. And, you know, he's got to get people in line. So he's always grimace about it. And I appreciate that. So, season four, I was skeptical because I wasn't the biggest fan of season three. Even though I liked it, I was just like, eh, because we built this whole thing up in season one and two where, you know, the two dojos are established. We try to get people liking each other, but shit keeps getting in the way. They keep creating rivalries. People switch around dojos and jump ship and come back on. And when we got into season three, even though it was about the, you know, kind of the Eagle Fang formation, and then ultimately it ended with the merger of Eagle Fang and Miyagi-Do, it just, for me, it didn't deliver. Like, I love the parts with Robbie and Juvie. And I know a lot of people had problems with that. I liked that because yeah. I thought that was really good character building. The relationship he formed with that dude that was harassing him. Like, I, I liked that. I thought it was kind of weird that he went to juvenile hall just because of a rumble in school when nobody else did, even though there <laughs> were countless people involved. But, hey, you want to pick on Robbie? He's the guy that takes one for the team. Okay, so maybe next time someone else will step up and go to juvie or jail for a couple of years for him. You know, they did it in Fast and Furious and a whole bunch of other movies, and it works It works as a plot point. Um, I also really liked how the, the kids are always in this state of flux. They're always changing. They're with this dojo. Now they're with this dojo. They have this realization, but then they have this realization. And it's this constant tug-of-war battle because you have Kreese talking shit. You have Johnny trying to be in the middle. You have Daniel over here. And these kids are just trying to find their niche. And I really like how Kreese exploited that in season three and really started to manipulate those kids. But when he realized that Daniel and Johnny were teaming up, rightfully so, because he fucking stole the dojo from Johnny, then our boy Terry Silver comes in. Yeah. And look, we're, we're going to talk about Terry Silver. We have a whole segment dedicated to Terry fucking Silver. But I, I want to get this off my chest because I thought about it last night. So. Terry Silver is Cobra Kai. It's not Crease. It's Terry Silver's business. He created it ground up. So how the fuck is Johnny allowed to use the name and all of the imagery? Because that would be copyrighted and trademarked to <laughs> Terry Silver. So Johnny comes along, infringes on all that, and there's no lawsuits around that? <laughs> Like, dude, you know, they would be on that like flies on shit, man. You can't even put up a YouTube video with sound of certain videos before you get season six <laughs> letters. So you think Mr. Rich Guy Silver is going to sit around and just let Johnny start this up and not pay him licensing fees or royalties? He could have just not wanted anything to do with it. That would be Yeah, right. We, we already knew that was a lie when he said that to Crease in the beginning of the Okay, he was like, okay. You know. We dude, we saw the the PTSD Vietnam guilt trip overcome him. Look at the picture above us. Does <laughs> right, that not, right. Does that not look at that shadow? You know what that shadow is? Vietnam. That's what the shadow is over there, all right? That's the Vietnam shadow. That's the man. Vietnam shadow. Like they're, they're <laughs> designing this image. They're like, we need a shadow. What type of shadow? Uh, do you guys think in Vietnam and then yeah, do you got a Vietnam with... thing? Yeah, do that. If that wasn't a band name before, it is now. Yeah, there it is. You nailed it out. Um, so the other thing that I think it's funny bring up Vietnam is that you know, like kids today have no fucking idea what Vietnam is. You know what I mean? Like they don't know that, you know, like being 80s kids, you know, World War II, Korea, <laughs> Vietnam, Desert Storm. We were either in it or we knew about it because it was still relevant and important. People were talking about it. There were a lot of veterans around. Our parents were like involved with it to some degree. But now you try to talk to kids about Vietnam. They're like, I don't fucking know what Vietnam is. And it's like, Jesus Christ, what is happening? They don't know right. Vietnam. I'm trying to do my best Johnny yeah. impression, you know, totally disconnected from technology in 2022. Which I think is hilarious. It's one of the best parts I think about his character is he's so naive with technology and the times that it's hilarious anytime that I comes think, up. I, but I think one of my favorite moments was when he was going on the Twitter rant and Miguel's the only one who knows about it because he's the only one that follows him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, Oh no, sensei's drunk tweeting. <laughs> Which that he doesn't even know what it is. Like, oh no, 
My sensei's drunk tweeting. Right, right. That's a very funny line. But I think that you bring up a good point, Jesse, is that with Johnny drinking all the time, like all of his students are just casually okay with it. It's like, oh man, sensei was really drunk today. Oh man, sensei's (laughs) been drinking. Dude, that doesn't happen, man. You try to pull that shit in Dublin, Ohio, man, that shit would be shut down in a week, man. Yeah. You'd be like, oh my God, the karate instructor was drinking a beer during class? Shut that shit (laughs) down. He's done. He was also throwing them in the back of a cement truck and telling them yeah. you have to get it moving or else yeah. it'll dry. Man, <laughs> that shit might fly in Reseda, to California, but it ain't gonna fly in Powell, Ohio, man. They they'd run always, that guy to town so fast. I always love the line where he's, after that happened. He's like, I just want to let you guys know I'm all proud of you. I'm all <laughs> proud of you. And if your parents knew about this, they'd be proud of you too. But we're not gonna tell them about this. <laughs> <laughs> we're not gonna tell them. But we're not gonna tell them. <laughs> so uh for me in season four, I, I really, really liked, and this is kind of an overall thing that I like about the series is that every time we get to a karate tournament or every time we get into a pivotal fight, it never ends the way we want it to end. And I love that they're doing that on purpose. Yeah. Because the three movies end exactly how you want them, exactly how you predict in every way, shape, or form. Daniel is always the hero. Daniel always wins in the end. He always learns stuff. And then that's it. It it, it pauses and then it's over. There's no aftermath or anything like that. With this, it's, I like that I, I don't want Cobra Kai to win. But then when they win, I'm like, holy fuck, this is amazing. (laughs) I I love that they keep doing that to us. And I love the ending of season four. So right now, if you're watching and you didn't see the spoiler warning, here it comes. So it's your fault. Leave now. All right. So the fact that Silver paid off the official so that they could win, and then it was Tori who felt bad about fighting dirty, and then she finds out what Silver did. I love this because one, it cements silver as a fucking prick. And yes. number two, it puts doubt in Tori. Robbie now has doubt. He's patching things up with his dad. And I think we're going to move into a season five where a lot of the things we've wanted to see for four seasons, we're going to finally see them. But we know what Cobra Kai does. As soon as Cobra Kai gives us something we like, they turn it upside down and fuck it up for us for the rest of the season. They so. Do. Al, go ahead. Yeah, can I can I elaborate on the point you just made, which go you're, ahead, you're absolutely a thousand percent right, by the Mike way. Like is yours. But but in addition to you being a thousand percent right about what you just said, uh, I also love that not only do they do they not give us what we want or what we think we want, but I love that it's always Daniel's kids who fuck everything <laughs> up always. <laughs> <laughs> they oh, literally totally cause agree. 101 percent of the problems on the show. Literally, <laughs> it's his kids, man. It's your fucking kids, Daniel. Get your shit in line. Yeah, and I like how they brought <laughs> Anthony back and made him a bully. That was so great because we had Sam yeah. Because Sam wasn't like a bully, bully, but she was allowing it to happen to somebody she cared about. Anthony just straight up becomes a bully, which is hilarious because they're raised by a dad who we know raised them not to be that way. And yeah, I hate his kids. I hate how entitled Sam acts, and I hate how much of an asshole that Anthony is. I care way more about Robbie than I do any of those LaRusso kids, man. For sure. For sure. <laughs> Miguel, like, I care way more about him and, oh, his, yeah. mom and his grandma than I do about any of the LaRussos, man. Yeah. Real quick, I just wanted someone brought this up in the comments section. I had to bring this up. This was another good highlight of season four. Johnny's lines when he's creeping yeah. on the bullfighters. fighters. Hey, when he was at school. That was you great. Guys did something was... really fun in an abandoned warehouse. You got to be under eighteen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the fuck, hold on. The, 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 the scene when he goes on his fucking rant about Top Gun. Oh my yeah. god, I was rolling on the floor. Absolutely, like, Ice Man. He's the best. He got abs for days. Like, dude, seriously. Oh my god. <laughs> I love that line. He's got abs for days. That's the best. <laughs> Dude, absolute I love best. I love if it. I if, if I ever had the opportunity to to ask William Zabka a question face to face in person, I'd be like, "Bro, are you one hundred percent scripted, or are you improving some of that shit?" 
because the shit you say on this show is fucking gold. Like everything yeah. you say it's is funny. out of this world. Just amazing. I agree. And it's funny you bring that up because from what I was able to find, they actually do follow the script mostly. Uh uh, Martin will change some of his lines, like he'll reverse them backwards and forwards, or he might mm. add something onto that. But for the most part, because they get asked this question at conventions all the time, and they keep saying, for the most part, it's it's script, you know, script to scene. Um, Dude, my, hands they, off, my hats off to the writers because that is some goddamn yeah, good writing. That's good writing, yeah. It is, but they do as any actor does. You know, there are some directors and some script supervisors who are like, if it's not on the page, it's not on the stage. And while right. I can respect that as art, I kind of disagree because it does still restrict your actors from doing what they do. I understand you want to see your vision, but if you want it to be the best, you got to let an actor be natural and do what they think is best for their character. You got to reel that in. You can't let him go ape shit. Otherwise, Edward Norton keeps happening. But no, no, no. <laughs> oh, yeah, I said it. I look, he's a great actor, but he's a fucking prick. We can all say it. Yes, it's a true prick. statement. That's fucking like, great. Nobody's lying about it. Everybody knows it's out in the open. I'm not saying anything that anybody doesn't know. But, you know, <laughs> I, I say give them the freedom. So good directors, good su script supervisors and producers will allow their actors to get into the character and give a good performance. And they allow that you know, from all the actors on this, but Martin and uh, Billy did rewrite a scene and, and they, they, they say that it's serious, but they rewrote a scene that they wanted to go differently. They submitted it to the writers. The writers were like, Hey, you guys did a good job, but we don't want to do that because it would have fundamentally changed the entire show. Um, you can find it on YouTube. It's really funny. I recommend checking it out because it shows that these serious characters that we see are actually really fun people in real life and they love right. what they do. They respect their fans. They're everybody involved with this show is thankful for the revival that has gotten and what they've mm. been able to do. And you can see it. It comes through right. in the performance. People care about what they're doing in the show, even if it's at a high cheese moment, which there's <laughs> plenty of it in this, but that's why we love it so much. They right. still care. Everybody involved with this show cares, and that makes a huge difference. And it comes through in the quality of the performances. Yeah, and then and a lot of great and a lot of things happen this season uh, for you know to draw great performances. You know, I know we we kind of talked about Daniel. You know, I mean, like how he's kind of uh, stepping more into he's he's stepping in and away from Miyagi at the same time. He is. Because of the lesson he learned in the third movie. You know, you got to do karate the way you do karate. You have to grow like the bonsai does, you know, grow on your own. Yes. You know? And like, and the one movie that really got me cheering was when he did the quiet on his son and then broke there it his is. over his knee. What's like, up, Ryan? What a champ, Ryan. That was a good scene. Quit! <laughs> <laughs> Dude, he did. He was just, yeah, he was just done with it man he was like that's it that's a wrap that's and a uh you know that's a real dad moment all of us who are dead yeah. which is basically al and i and not jesse uh <laughs> understand what that moment is so yeah I just, <laughs> he's uh, just like yeah <laughs> yeah to, to your point uh i just i read an article earlier today on facebook the 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 actor who plays hawk he said he was he was adamantly against them turning him babyface in the show this season he, he was like, I wanted to stay a prick, but they 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 were like, no, 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 you're going good. And he's like, I don't want to do it. And I totally respect that. Like, I love that he loves playing the heel and he wanted to stay yeah. like being that character. That's so cool. I totally yeah. agree. Um, but I will say, Al, while I agree, uh, I love I love him as a good guy more than I do as a bad guy. I I, oh, I, just, really? I gotta be honest. I do, I do, because it's the hawk, man. You know, oh, hawk he's is not a bad guy. And Hawk is always good, you know. I just, he plays both sides really well, though. He does. I mean, he can do either. That I hope that kid moves on to other stuff because I think he's got potential in a lot of other types of films. Um, yeah. Jesse, what did you think about the other big turn of events? And this is for you too, Al, at the end of season four, where we find out that Terry Silver is essentially Emperor Palpatine. And he has manufactured this elaborate, like, 30-year plan 
and it went off flawlessly, which includes felonious assault and attempted murder against the guy who played Richard Jewell in I, Tanya, and Kreese didn't even see it coming. Totally got outplayed like the best move in Survivor. What would you guys think about that? I I was blown away. Yeah, I didn't I, see it coming, man. I, I, I knew. I okay. Look, I, a clock was ticking in my head because <laughs> when when uh, Crease when when I think Terry said to Crease like, "I know your weakness," or, something, or no, no, no. Uh, who said about the weakness thing? And then they get offended. Like I knew well, that at first. At first, Terry Silver said it. He was like, even Sensei Crease yes, had the weakness. Yes, yes. And dude, Crease was like, "What the fuck did you just say?" Yeah. Like, and he said that just by looking at him, man. It was so good when he buys that beer for him and he has that yeah. talk with him about. I knew right at that point something was going clock down. Was counting down. I didn't know when it would hit zero. Yeah. Okay. I knew a clock was counting down, but man, was it when you saw the red and blue lights flow? And you saw the one guy waking up. You're like, oh, yeah. I just about go down. Yep. Right. He got him on. He got him pretty much on uh, attempted murder. That's insane. Yeah, man. Yeah, Crease isn't going to jail overnight. This motherfucker's going to pound me in the ass, federal penitentiary, man. <laughs> Exactly. But you exactly. know he's gonna get out of it. It's it's kind of like the old Family Guy joke when they did Family Guy Star Wars, and he's like, you know, we we got five of the six main characters here. I think we'll be okay. Like, you know, Crease is not going to jail, and if he does, he's coming back, guys. He's not gonna be gone that long. He's like the glue for the show, man. So you know, he something's gonna happen. Clearly, yeah, you don't bring this guy out of retirement just to have him uh, exactly. Like- He's going to have something he's going to do. And I'm looking forward to it uh, because, I mean, his character is so good. His demeanor is great. And he's very intimidating. He just like when he shows up and he has that like, like you think you're hot shit, like that look in his face. It's fantastic. And, 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 and to see how evil Terry is, is, is brilliant because Terry. Okay. Listen, I said this already. Terry is this dude's ride or die at one point. You know what I mean? He put his multi-million dollar company on hold, all right, while being sued because he's, you know, you can't get sued again without spilling toxic waste everywhere or whatnot. You know, this guy does car auditions to find the most poor looking car. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know, you know I mean? he's like his clothing, he's buying, remember he was like different outfits. He's buying 20 locations for him. He's, <laughs> He's going out of his way to gaslight an 18-year-old <laughs> and physically harm him, as well as gaslighting a uh, a World War II veteran, not right. to mention assaulting him a few times, right. and then and then t- pretending to be that 18-year-old's friend while telling him that your worst bully you ever had died of a heart attack. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're paying for a new bully. To bully Danny and yeah. then push him off a fucking cliff with push a him off tree. the cliff, man. Yeah, and then he tells him, "No, he's alive." And he they they gang up on him in the middle of the night in an abandoned karate studio. And I say abandoned because no customers were to be seen. Yeah, that, that, that was there were no current classes being. There's held. no current classes, and I'm just thinking like. Holy shit, this guy. So, I mean, there's a part of me. There's a tiny part of me that goes, you know what? Fuck Crease. You know what? You deserve this. You were getting on Terry's back for many years, guilty him with that nom shit. And you know what? He decided, I've I've had it. And he needed a clean break. He needed a clean break. Was it healthy what Terry did? No. But. It depends on the perspective. (laughs) I think it was. It was a clean break. He, I mean, he, dude, Cobra Kai, strike first. Strike first, indeed. Indeed. So, I mean, so I think what I'm trying to say is I think Terry was a victim, and we need to care about him more. So, we, uh... <laughs> hey, man, brother, I'll, I'll, I'll drink to that. I'm drinking scotch, by the way. I'm... <laughs> Got my gamma bomb. The man all right, so I want I want to give Al some time to talk about Terry Silver because he modeled his hairstyle after Terry Silver today, which my hair is too long to do. It would be way too long in the back, but Al's is yes! pop it up there. Yes. So, uh, Al, 
tell us about why Terry Silver is the man and will always be the man. And Jesse, I want you to go through and look for some comments to put up here. So we got some stuff to respond to once Al's okay. finished. All right, man. So I got to start. I got to start clear back at the end of season three. Okay. Let's do it. Do it. So end of season three, when everything was just speculation, right? Like the rumors are flying. Terry, Terry Silver is like the only logical oh, yeah. move. Cause, right. Because the, the last episode, he's making, Chris is making his phone call like, hey, what's up, bro? You know, what's, it's got, it's got to be Terry Silver. It's got to be, right? So rumors are abound, like, is he coming? Is he coming? And then, you know, finally, we they start dropping, like, the actual press releases and what. Terry Silver will be in season four. Oh, my God, mind blown. I can't wait, dude. Terry yes. fucking Silver. Oh, my God. And then I've said this before, like, when, when, when season four started, and I started watching it for Terry Silver. I could give a shit about anything else. I'm like, Terry Silver, Terry Silver. Fuck <laughs> right, yeah. right. Um, I could give a shit about anything else. I'm watching it, and I'm like, you're, you're really going to do Terry Silver like this? He's a pussy. Little did I know. <laughs> they were setting me up for the old bait and switch, and I walked right the fuck into oh, it. Oh, you fell I, for it, man. I fell for it, dude. And I'm, I'm usually pretty good at predicting outcomes, right? This is how I thought it was going to go down. I thought, like, season finale, Cobra Kai season four, I thought the cops were going to show up at the All-Valley Tournament and arrest Terry Silver on spot, and Cobra Kai was going to get disqualified because of that shit or whatever, because yeah. Sensei's getting arrested for, for, for attempted murder, assault, whatever, yeah. and they were going to get disqualified, and then it was going to default to LaRusso's winning tournament. Yay, happy ending. Yay. No. <laughs> Not they got me, man. They they got me so hard, and uh, I loved it. I loved every fucking minute of it. Yeah, that ending. I, I I could not have predicted that at all. That was a completely unpredictable ending. A complete that that season ended the best possible way. I didn't see it coming ending. either, I, man. I did. I did. I am so pumped for season five now. I cannot wait to see what Terry Silver does. You know, Mister Fucking Man can't stand. He can't fight. You're goddamn right, Terry. Kick that motherfucker's legs out from underneath him. And I don't care whose life he fucks in the next season. I'm here for it. I, I want to see it all, man. He can so, fuck everybody's life, and it's cool. Um, did, did you uh, see the uh, Easter egg when uh, Tori and Robbie went to prom and they took Terry's car? It had the Quicksilver license plate. Yeah, yeah. I saw that. The Mustang, the yeah. yeah. Absolutely. So, yeah, man. Terry, Terry Silver, like, I'm here for it. I love that, dude. Like, I, I, oh, it still agreed. blows my mind. That Terry Silver was that actor's first role ever. Oh, and, really? the first I kid and introducing what's his name, Gilliam, as, uh, as Thomas Terry. Ian Griffin. Yeah, Tom Ian Griffin, and uh, that was his first role, dude. How do you knock? How do you knock it out of the fucking park that hard on your first role ever? Damn. Some people just get it, man. They get that character that they just play so fucking well. And I mean, it was the perfect balance of 80s cheese, like WWE villain, and like even a cartoon character, like all mm -hmm. wrapped up in one, man. You know, and and I think it's, it's, it's kind of like if you had like Shooter McGavin, Emperor yeah. Palpatine, and like Biff Tannen, and they all nutted in a cup and you mixed it up. <laughs> like, Dude, and that's what, who Terry Silver is, man. What's yeah. so fucking awesome? What's so fucking awesome about Terry Silver is is his his caliber of douchebaggery, right? Oh, is on dude. par with oh. like Joffrey oh. from Game of Thrones. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't even watch Game of Thrones, but I know that's hilarious. But his charisma is just so hardcore. You can't help but like the guy. Yeah. You want to see him fuck somebody's life. You don't even feel like <laughs> I really like that guy. <laughs> you know, you're, you're absolutely so great. right. I can't wait to see you, Terry Silver, fucks over this time. <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, and I love the scene where, you know, like when it's, he, it's like coming back to him and it's like all slow mo and he pulls out the one hairband. And then it's like the Sam Elliott in Roadhouse yeah. where he's like pulling it back. Yeah. Right, right, right. I'm right. like, oh my God. It's like, it's basically like in Superman 3, when he has the junkyard fight with the evil Superman and Clark right. Kent and kills the evil Superman, he realizes, oh shit, I am the Superman. He rips the <laughs> shirt open and there it is. That was that moment when Terry Silver got that hairband out and pulled that right. fucking hairband. Or that like was when the Superman 3 and moment. And over the top, when Sylvester Sloan turns his cap around, I'm like this. That's the same thing. <laughs> <Yeah>. Exactly, <laughs> man. Dude. It, it that was to me such I don't know why that was so an emotional moment for me. It was <laughs> I was like, oh my god, here it is. I because like I was like I've been waiting for this because it, it, you, 
like I never knew Cobra Kai would evolve this far as it has. Yeah. I remember watching yeah. this, guys. I watched this on YouTube. All right, and and like when I watched it on YouTube, like never in a million years did I think it would be like this. And yeah. it, it, it has this was to me. This is a show that is that glows up. It has been glowing up ridiculously. Now. I want to jump over to the comment section because we got a lot of love in the comments. We, we, we are getting blown up with the comments. Let's see. Let's respond to some. What do we got? Okay, so uh, we're going to go back a little bit. Ryan says, fuck Daniel's kids. Yeah, I fuck the <laughs> kids, man. Exactly. Yeah. Out of here. Uh, Johnny's trying to be a father figure is hilarious. Dude, my favorite scene is where he's trying to find out how to tell Miguel he's dating his mom. And he, lo- he Googles. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> How does a sensei tell your students <laughs> mom that you're boning them? And then it's like so <laughs> like we're born. Yeah. <laughs> you have to be give him credit. He's not only using Google, but he's being very specific. He learned really quick how to use technology. I give the man credit for trying. I was, I was losing. Oh, like, yeah, but all laughing. the porn coming up is that was hilarious. <laughs> was like, like, yep, there you go, man. <laughs> oh. And then Tom's got something for us. He says, I want to see Daniel get hospitalized by Crease, Crease and Johnny uh, get hospitalized by Crease and Johnny be the hero to step up and train the next I, champion. I'd be down for that. Ooh, that would be pretty good. Because was- look, let, let's be real. Let's build off what Tom said before we go off to the next segment. This is a really good comment, Tom. Thank you. Uh, because I've said all along, Cobra Kai is Johnny's show. You know, right. the Karate Kid trilogy was Daniel's show. This is Johnny's show, and I would love to see, because I feel like every show gets canceled. It it, it happens. Whether it's chosen or not chosen, it happens. But with a show this big, they will get a chance to end it, okay? This won't be like other Netflix shows that gets canceled, ABC shows that get canceled, you know, Firefly, da-da-da-da, even though they did give them a movie, but it's still kind of not the same thing. So with Cobra Kai, they're going to get to finish it. Whenever that plug is pulled, they're going to get to finish it. And I would love to see this be the ending where Johnny gets to be the champion. Yeah. No, I, it's it, to me, like this whole thing has been Johnny's redemption arc. Mm-hmm. And, and it's been portrayed Absolutely. beautifully. He, I mean, season one, he saw the error of his way when Miguel won. He saw like, yep. what, like okay, this is not right. Yep. And, and he's, he's what he's trying to do right now is he's trying to take all the good parts of Cobra Kai that made him feel good and make him feel like a badass and and take that move forward. Because he wants he, at the end of the day, he wants Miguel to be better. He just wants Miguel to be better than him. And so, I want to build off of that. I have a question for you, Al, building off of what Jesse literally just said. Uh, so how would you think the motivation would be for Johnny if. Robbie wasn't a character, wasn't in the in in the show, didn't exist. Because let's be honest, there is the whole piece of him wanting to have that relationship, especially when Robbie's with Daniel for the for the what season and a half he's with him. So there's motivation there for him to get better as a person because of Robbie. Then there's mm-hmm. the jealousy, and then there's the revenge, and then there's the wanting to have what somebody else has that he wants, all of that stuff, right? So that fuels his change in Cobra Kai's message to say, hey, we can still strike first, strike hard and have no mercy, but we can do it with class and we don't have to be dirty or cheat to do that. Right. Would that revelation happened as it did if Robbie was nowhere in the picture and it was just he and Miguel? Man, uh, that's that's a really good question. And we're, we're four seasons deep right now, and I don't really have a good answer to that question. I think I think at this point Robbie is just as essential to the show as Daniel or I Johnny agree. are. Um, I agree. I, I I don't I don't think I, and I think the, the reality here is I think you're going to get an answer to that question in the next season. Just based on where I see Robbie's story arc going, I think he's going to start seeing that Cobra Kai is lame, or uh, yeah, and and maybe go back to to Johnny or whatever. Uh, that's a very plausible story arc in the next season or the next two. I, I read somewhere that they have enough material for at least two more seasons as of right now. Keep uh, coming. The story keeps evolving, so maybe the sky's the limit. Who knows? Um, I'll talk more about that when we get to the predictions 
yeah. segment of this. Uh, but I do, I do, because I do have some thoughts on the predictions and things I had, I'd kept quiet about until now because I want to drop them in the. I know you've part. been waiting, man. Yeah. All right, what do you think of this prediction? I think it might happen. We don't know. Maybe this. Maybe this is what <laughs> finally breaks Edward through. Norton. Oh, gonna get Edward Norton in prison, Chuck. You're the man with the comment today. Jesus. Awesome. I was like, I was like, wow, that 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 was pretty extreme. Yep. Like, oh, that's, that, that, that's, that's one for happen. the record books. All right. Brother would be proud. F it. Silver takes silver. <laughs> so there it is. Like, look, everybody's on board with this. Like, let's do it. <laughs> I love. Here's the thing: the two terms, defeat and then take out. So I'm like, does he murder Larusso? But Johnny the Wind Streets, <laughs> like those are like. Here's the thing: I wouldn't put it past them. Their murder is getting. We're getting close. We're getting close. We're getting close. We've got we so far the show. We've had someone been put into two different comas. Yeah, right, he, right, right. Ray was in a day or two coma, but it was a day or two. Yeah. You know? So, I mean, we, we're getting there. We're getting there. Uh, let's see. I was just on the, oh, yeah. I, yeah, me too. We were we were pumped. We were pumped. Uh, let's see. No doubt the people handling the show are doing everything right. Absolutely. Fucking yeah. uh, Does Sean Conn from Part 3 come back to pair with Silver? Uh, if I remember correctly, that's, the, that's Mike. Yeah. Oh, Mike Barn. Mike yeah. Barn. Uh, I so I I saw somewhere maybe it was either a video I was watching or an article I was reading. Uh, but there have been talks. I don't know. I that's all it said. There's just been some conversations. So I mean, look, has anybody else really turned this show down? And let's be honest, four seasons deep, number one show on Netflix. What's he doing to where he would turn this down? Right. Yeah, what like, you got going on right now? You baking cookies? What, you, what the fuck are you doing? And, and even if you had something else going down, <laughs> this is a 10-season show. They shoot the show in a month, I think, or two months, something like that. I think the the, the, the shooting schedule is, is, is not crazy like a regular production film is. So You know what? They can work That's around. another thing. I just want to mention this real quick. That's another thing I really love about the show. I love the half-hour runtime of the episodes. Yes. Yeah, it's, it, they can pack they can pack just as much action in a half hour as any other show. It takes an hour or longer to do. Totally, and agree. I don't feel like I'm sitting there wasting my life watching yep. binging a season of this because it's not really taking up that much of my time. You got it, man. Sometimes can... some shows just don't need to be an hour. Like you, just, no. I would rather less is more. Yep. Less yeah, yeah, more. more. And the, and this show is a grand example, and it keeps us way more. But with Mike Barnes, I would be very interested because not to get ahead of myself with the segments, but you know. Silver needs a right hand man, and technically, technically, uh, I'm not sure what the basis of the contract was in the third movie. I wasn't sure if it was contingent upon winning or participating. But right, oh, that's a Barnes, great point. That's Barnes a great fucking point. That's a great point. Barnes owns 50% of the Cobra Kai. We'll, we'll find out more. We'll See, this out. is what ha- I told you. There is a legality problem here with Johnny Oakley and <laughs> Cobra Kai again. No, Look, I, now you, now you, didn't like con- dogma. You, you didn't consult with the guy who owns 50% equity in the IP? Of course right? he's going to come back, and he's going to want his check. So are Dude. you ready to write that check yeah. for him or what? Dude, this Dude is you're a plot hole hound. hound. No, no, one knows. Knows. It out. <laughs> no one knows. <laughs> All right, next, uh, Je- yeah, Johnny will become a Miyagi and a mentor, a prospective champion, while yeah. becoming a better person if it, if his son was not in it. Uh, yeah, that's if his son wasn't in it, that uh, Miguel would have been in it. Fair. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Fair statement. It better end with the crane. I want Johnny doing the crane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. Funny. Yeah, poetic justice. Yep, absolutely. But like, but like he doesn't do it perfect. Like there's something <laughs> weird about it. Just something. Oh, I want it to be perfect. Johnny be deserves his moment. I want yeah. him to have it. But I want it to be a Johnny's crane. You know what I mean? I want it to just. I want it to be just when you look at it, you're like that's Johnny doing that. <laughs> you know, I, I I can't. I don't know what that looks like, but hopefully we'll see it. Because Johnny, the one thing I like about his character is that he his character is silly as fuck. He can fight, he can kick ass, but he's ridiculous. But that's why we love him. The dude didn't know what Facebook was in 2020. Like, that was so (laughs) great, man. I know. Put a hash brown on it. You put a hash brown on it. Put the hash brown on it. There it is. I love how that joke is still going in the show, because if you look at his Twitter rant, hash brown fight night. (laughs) 
I, oh. oh my god, it just he's trying he's trying. That's the thing. He's trying and we love that about his character. Jesse, uh, let's let's move into the predictions. Uh because yeah. we're running out of time. All right. So uh let's talk predictions and I want people lighting up the comment section. Let us know what you think is gonna be happening in season five. So just to give a quick, quick, quick end recap of season five. Uh, Terry betrayed Kreese. Kreese is now in jail for the attempted murder of Stingray, which Terry technically committed, but him and Stingray are in cahoots. Uh, Johnny, Johnny is going off to Mexico to seek out Miguel because Miguel has run away to find his lost father. Um, let's see. Uh, what's the one chick, the bully chick? She found out that Terry rigged the whole match. Yep. Tori. Um, and then Tori. Daniel, Daniel is now teaming up with Chosen from Karate Kid Part Two. Oh, dude, I got goosebumps when yeah. when the camera panned. I'm like, I, as soon as it started to pan, I'm like, someone's there. Who is it? And at first, I thought it was going to be a Maga- Miyagi Jedi ghost, and I was really I, a little bit, a little bit. Yeah, there was, Al, come on, man, was there a little bit where you were like, he's going to be standing there? That would have been cool. Uh, yeah. I'd have been down with that. But as soon as I saw that it was chosen, I literally said out loud, and it was like 3.30 in the morning. I had woken up early. Like, I get up way early in the morning for work anyways, and I had just woken up early, couldn't get back to sleep. I'm like, ah, oh, let me slam the rest of Cobra Kai season four. And uh, I saw that. I was like, oh, shit. Like, I said it out loud. So, uh, yeah, I was really, really pumped. That was great. So, Al, you have been <laughs> waiting days and days to talk about this. You've had an awesome conversation with us throughout this entire show, and we appreciate that. But you have no been problem. waiting to talk about what your prediction is. So, my friend, the stage is yours. Enlighten us with what you got, because I am ready to hear it. All right. So, first, I'm going to say this. Uh, disclaimer for your listeners. What I'm about to say right now is merely, purely my opinion. It's speculation based on what I observe in the show. Right. I didn't read this online anywhere. This is just a prediction, and I hope I'm wrong. But the only thing I did not like about season four is I don't really care with what they're doing with Miguel's story arc right now. And if I'm being completely honest, it kind of feels to me right now, at least preliminarily, like they're getting ready to write him off the show. It does Again, I hope, I'm, like I hope I'm wrong. I, I hope I'm wrong. We'll see. I was wrong about the season finale of season four. That mm-hmm. was a total right turn. I didn't see happening. Um, but it just kind of, and I, I know the actor who plays Miguel, he got offered a role as a DC superhero. Uh, so, you know, his career is taken off. Uh, I hope he can find balance. Mm. See what it did there? See what it did? I hope he can find balance between his, his budding movie career and the show. Uh, if it doesn't work out that way, I mean, Best of luck to him in his future endeavors. Thanks for the memories. But it just kind of feels like to me right now, he might be getting written off the show. I don't know about the Mexico thing. I feel like something bad is going to happen in Mexico. We might not see Miguel again. I hope I'm wrong. We'll see. I think, uh, I hope, yeah. I, I'm scared that you got me all, you got me shaking, man. You got me shaking. <laughs> Sorry, dude. I didn't mean to, I didn't mean to kill, kill the vibe. So, but, you know it, you know it. I love it. I love it. I, uh, other predictions. Um, I think the next logical step has to be it's got to be Barnes. Uh, yeah, Mike Barnes right. has to yeah, come it in. Has to be. I would love, I would love to. Well, first of all, I, I would love to see a rematch between uh, Johnny and Silver. Yeah. Um, the first, the first, the first fight was cheap in that you know Silver got the job, the, the job, the drop on him. He got a he got a sucker punch in there. Johnny wasn't hundred percent. I'd like to see a fight where they're both hundred yeah. percent. Let's let's see who comes out on top of that. I would also love to see a showdown between Johnny and Barnes. Yeah, man, um, that'd be cool. I that that's what I want to see. That fingers crossed. This is what I want to see in season four. I want to see. But let's let's find out who the best Larusso villain is. Let's you know. Um, my money's on Johnny. I always thought Johnny was the biggest badass of the the first. You know the, the of the movies. Um, uh, Chosen would be second, and then Barnes in third. Barnes, I just never really got a connection with. To me, he was just a, a mercenary. He was a hired gun that yeah. Terry hired to do his dirty work. There was never like an emotional connection. Whereas Johnny. There was so much drama with, with him and Daniel because it was personal, right? It was over a girl. We've all been there. We know that. Yeah. Um, and Johnny's move, like, even in the tournament, Johnny's moves are sick. They're just badass. Like the one where he grabs the dude's arm, kicks his leg over, and then kicks the dude in the face, which that move, 
his, his girl that he recruited from Eagle Fang, she did that same move in the tournament, which I thought was really cool that they did a callback to that. And then not only that, but in this season, they did a, a – I love I love that they referenced Bloodsport. That is so fucking cool yeah, because there's man, a lot of parallels absolutely. between Bloodsport and Karate Kid. When you watch the two movies, it's like the only thing different is the cast, kind of. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> kind of. The, the whole illegal but, fighting thing, though, where – Yeah, right, yeah. Sweet um, the drug. But uh, but in, in Bloodsport, uh, Chong Lee does that same move too, where he kicks his leg over the dude's arm and then kicks the dude in the face. Yeah. Uh, so um, I thought that was really cool. Uh, it would be cool if we saw some Bloodsport characters show up in Cobra <laughs> Why not? Why not? I, 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 Dude, Bolo yeah. getting still alive, man. Bring him in. Hey, maybe Jean Claude Van Damme will be Mr. Miyagi's half brother. Who knows? You know, it could happen. <laughs> um, Let's have Jean Claude Van Damme. Play the wise a guy who trains him in kickboxer. Let's just do it. Oh shit! Bridge the gap, man. <laughs> Bridge the gap all the way. Let's just do right. it. <laughs> so, Al, uh, along with your predictions of season five, do you think that uh, both Robbie and Tori are going to jump ship and go over to? Look, I hope they don't name it Miyagi Fang or like Eagle Doe. Like, come Eagle up Doe. with a brand new name. You learned that you can't hold on to the past that you have to evolve and move forward, but you can remember the past. So we finally in four seasons got to the point where you're going to have to change names and come up with your own. I'm good with that, but I want a whole new name anyways. So where, where are you in terms of, of, of that front? Uh, That's a great question too. I haven't really thought about it. Um, I see, I see both of them kind of like changing their, their ways and seeing the error of their like violent ways and whatnot. Yeah. If that happens, they're going to have to fill that gap, though. They're going to have to have somebody step up on Cobra Kai, or at least two yeah, people they, step they, up. Yeah, they, they would have no. Oh, they've got um the they the, got the one girl. Yeah, they're, they already they, have and, a girl who's who's uh, yeah she's she's looking to take the place of Tori on that team. Yeah, so they got the girl covered, but they're going to need they're going to need another, another boy champion if uh, if uh, Robbie jumps ship. So, so what could they do with that then? Are they going to bring Anthony in and make him a Cobra Kai and go against his dad? I don't know. Hmm. Throwing that out there. It's interesting. Uh, I mean, with this show. He's already got the bully mentality. (laughs) Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that he hasn't learned. And I think that because he has that mentality that Terry Silver is going to pull him in real easily. And then now you have Daniel's son against Daniel, just like it used to be Robbie versus Johnny. But it looks like hopefully, because I do want to see Robbie and Johnny bury it and team up and i really want to see johnny and daniel finally bury it team up and not do this okay we're enemies again let's make them permanent friends now we're all ready for that we want to see that and i think they can do that now with johnny and robbie but how how great of a conflict would that be to flip anthony against uh daniel hmm that would be very interesting i mean that's a brilliant thing about this show is that we try to predict the incoming rivalries of what could happen. And then the, the show is so good at setting up events and that go into motion that cause another rivalry. Yeah. So if yeah, you told absolutely. me that like Tori would start repenting her feelings that she's been, do, you know, being evil and stuff like that. I'd be like, shut up, shut up. That ain't true. <laughs> and now it's like, what? I always love but I do love yep. the goofy scene. There was a scene that they did, and it was such a writer's joke, like, but like where they were like showing like how bad her life is. She's backstage putting a wig on. That's some creepy. Mm, yeah, like, yeah, three yeah. minutes, ladies, come on! And then everybody's heads like, is she fucking stripping? What the fuck happened? <laughs> and I think that was a direct punch at Riverdale because Riverdale. If anybody's seen that show, it's gone off the rails and it's ridiculous. <laughs> And they and there was a season where one of the high school characters does a strip tease in uh, a bar, and everybody's cheering. And like you're watching, you're like, is it, aren't, "Is she high school? What the fuck is happening?" Like, and I th- and I think this show was kind of taking a ha ha. We know how to do nostalgia better. You know what I mean? And it was brilliant. Is they River were- is real quick? Is Riverdale the Archie show, but it's modern? Is yeah. that what show that is? Yeah. Okay. All right, yeah, Al, yeah. go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, like a so, great first season, and that's it. Uh, 
so before before that scene happened, I was watching I was watching the show with my girlfriend, and and when Tori said she, she before before everything got to that scene, Tori was like, "I got a new job, man, man, whatever." And I literally turned on my girlfriend. And I'm like, "She's stripping." And then they got to the scene and she put on the wig, and I'm like, "I was right." I was right. And then she walked out the mermaid costume at the birthday party. I'm like, ah, they got me again. Got me, again. <laughs> got me twice in the same season. They're good. They're, they're good, good man. They got they're you. Good, they, they're good, man. They're good. I think with the incoming season, um, if I were to make a quick prediction, I'm hoping they don't write Robbie out, but you got a point. I mean, he's going to play the Blue Beetle. I, I know. I hope that they don't either. Maybe it was just they did, They needed to sideline him because they need to kind of do this shit with Robbie. They've got this shit going on with Samantha still. They've got this shit going on with Hawk. Like, the, the problem is, is they have a lot of subplots going right now. Yeah, they sure do. I think, I think they're trying to resolve those, and I think if they can resolve a few that are distracting, then they can bring Miguel back in and bring him. Because I mean, he's a, he's the lead with Johnny. Like, yeah, the show is about the two of them. So yeah. I think they just need to resolve some of this baggage to bring time for him and bring him back up. I agree. I agree. Because I'm I'm going to say this with no Miguel, this there is no Cobra Kai. Because yeah, absolutely. And I say that because for Johnny, you know that. He Miguel's a part of his redemption. Yes. Yeah, I mean that it's a Miguel's the reason he opened the dojo. Yeah, he opened the dojo. Yep. He yep. he's he's one of the reasons why he wants to become a better person. He wants him to become a better person. He doesn't want him to win tournaments like he did. So there's this certain thing where it's like if you remove his if you remove that, you remove a huge part of the show. So yeah, I think I think with the 10 episode schedule, they'll be able to keep him on. I do too. I think I think DC will figure it out, and Netflix. This is a big show for them. I don't think right. they're going to let. And and Will Smith is the producer, so he'll carry some weight. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping that that they that he'll stay on. But I agree, some things need to get resolved so the focus can go back on them. Because yeah, while they're while sometimes they do a really good job balancing balancing so many storylines, but sometimes you're like. You, you want there's certain storylines you want to specifically watch for the payoffs. Yeah, sure. And, yeah. and he's one of them. And he's one of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, I know we got to wrap up. Let me hit some of these. Uh, well, wait, John, we didn't get your prediction. John. Hold on real quick. Show Tom's recommendation for the new name. And then the comment right after that. <laughs> the LL Doe, Daniel and Johnny. And then look, there it is. Mama said, knock you out. <laughs> I can perfect, see that. Tom. Perfect. We, we, they should get Tom to score it. I, I, uh, here's and then real quick. Here's this. Johnny summons the ghost of Sato. <laughs> and then a full retro eighty skeleton skin and a dubious mouth. Crane's Daniel. <laughs> it's the best around. Blasting him back. This is like the most perfect picture anybody has painted. Way to go, Tom. I I mean that's the kind of unpredictable ending that they like to go with. I I can't, yeah. I can't discount it. I I I think there's two things that are my favorite in this. So, the fact that they they brought up Sato, okay? Which if you guys don't remember Sato, that was Miyagi's rival in Okinawa. Yeah, and number that two, dude was intense. I, that yeah. dude was intense, man. <laughs> he, was, he was always angry. He was never not angry. Yeah, man, he was. And I love the fact that he says cranes. I like yeah. he made that a verb. I'm going to start using that to people. I'm, like, I'm going to fucking crane you if you don't shut the fuck up. <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's, a, that's a new word. Tom, thank you for giving me that in my vocabulary. That's going to be that's gonna be put in everywhere. But, uh, John, real quick before we wrap up. what you Yeah, yeah we're running low on time. So, really, my predictions have kind of already been stated. Al, I, I, I really love the way your mind works. And you can tell that you're just as passionate about this show as we are. So, it's great to well, have you on. Because I think we're all three aligned on everything all of us are saying. There hasn't yeah. been anything that we fundamentally disagreed with. And, you know, for me, really, season five, like I said, I, I let's let's resolve some of these subplots nobody cares about. Or that, hey, that was a cool idea, but then it didn't go anywhere. I'm not mad at you for it, but go ahead and resolve it so we can move forward. Let's get Robbie back in the mix with Johnny. Let's resolve them. Boom, they're a team. But what does that do to Miguel? Because Miguel, you know, 
Johnny and his mom are fucking. So then you have Miguel. So is he going to be the step kid? And now he's got to be the mentor and the dad to two kids. Holy shit. Now we have sibling rivalry. Boom. That makes great TV. Mm. Terry Silver, you bring in fucking Barnes. They have a circle jerk together. They try to repeat <laughs> whatever the new name of Miyagi Fang is. And then they fail miserably again. And this time, the police come and they arrest my man, Terry Silver. But as he's getting walked out, his lawyer is right behind him, already working on getting him out. So you know <laughs> he's going to come back again at some point. And then we have my man, Crease. My man, Crease, gets brought out of jail because they realize, hey, Terry Silver planned this all along. He comes back and goes full on crazy at Cobra Kai. And he is the one that recruits the rejects of the karate tournaments where they lose in that particular uh, that particular um, all valley tournament. He brings them into Cobra Kai to take the second place losers into first place and evolves that forward. That's a bit of a stretch, but I just thought about that today. There you have it. I know. And that's the thing with this show. Anything is possible. We've learned that very early on. So you never know. But that's all the time we got today. I want to oh, say. Oh, man. I know. I'm this fly. show flew by. And I knew this was going to take. I knew our hour was going to go quick. Yeah. I want to thank everybody lighting up the, the comment thank section. You. Ted, Brian, Tom, Shep. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think of anybody else. Am I missing? Other Ryan. Other Tom. Uh, <laughs> ba, 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 ba. No, the Tom. We got one the Tom and then the other the Tom. You know oh, there I mean? you go. Ryan. Oh, yeah. I said Ryan's name. Yeah. Thank you guys so much. Uh, uh, thank you so much. We really enjoyed thank doing you. this episode. We're glad you really appreciate it. And I want to give a big shout out to Big Al for coming on the show. Thank you so much, man. We appreciate your time, man. No mercy. Yeah, no man. Mercy. No mercy. Yes. And uh, like I said, uh, tune in next week. Uh, we'll have a new show for you then. But to catch up on this show, in case you didn't catch all of it, go to YouTube, like and subscribe. You can watch all past episodes and catch up there. You can even watch our previous Cobra Kai episode. Oh, yeah. yeah. That was a great episode, too, man. So, yeah, we'll you have more Cobra more. Kai oh, episodes after this out. one. <laughs> you can watch multiple ones. You can watch how dead wrong we were about our predictions. Because this show <laughs> is so but amazing. But I'm dead wrong about mine because I don't want to be right. Yes. My, well, we were right about Terry Silver. Me and John oh, were calling we that called forever. That we, called we, were that like, we were like the, the soothsayer witches at the beginning yeah. of uh, – of uh, Macbeth, we're like something wicked this yep. way comes. He's Terry like, Silver. coming back. He's, <laughs> he's coming back. back. He's like coming that's back. and he's not back. Yes. So put him in a body bag. Sweep the leg, folks. Yeah. Enjoy your evening. And I want to give it up for our producer Vance, who pro produces the goods. It's what he does. Um, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Catch us next week. And until next time, I'm Jesse. And I'm John. And you've been sitting at the grown-ups table. Thank you, and have an awesome night. Quit! No mercy! Yes!